Very good afternoon to everybody. Professor Vijay Raghavan, uh, Principal Scientific Advisor, Professor Sachijit Mayer, uh, Center Director NCBS, Professor Srinivas, Dean ESIC Medical College, Dr. Sanjay Sarin, Dr. Kela Darsan, my colleagues from TIFR Hyderabad. It's uh, really a great uh, honor and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all for this inauguration of the COVID-19 Diagnostic Training Program. Uh, this has been made possible by A, uh, the direct initiative of the PSA and his office, and also by generous funding from the um, Gates Foundation, the Bill and Belinda Gates Foundation. My colleagues uh, Manish and Adish will later during the program, as you could see, will tell you a little bit about the overview of the training program. So what I thought I'll tell you uh, is about what uh, other activities we have been doing um, here uh, at TIFR Hyderabad as a part of this, um, uh, in, in terms of what we have been doing for COVID. So let me just tell you uh, a brief uh, overview about what we have been doing. Yeah, so this just tells you about, um, you know, some of the activities and primarily many of these activities have been prompted by the very active interest taken by uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan and his office. So we are doing both the both immediate as well as long term research and immediate we have been, um, uh, we have clearly completed standardizing a quick, low cost, reliable LAMP assay to detect COVID-19 positive samples in 30 minutes. This is by Dr. Manish Jaiswal, Adish Danian and their groups. And in fact, we're talking to a company in uh, Bangalore, which hopefully will bring this out. Uh, then we have uh, the, some, some of our colleagues have been designing a rechargeable N95 mask uh, and also building a device to test the quality of masks. And of course, today, uh, initiating a COVID-19 diagnostic training program on the campus. The long-term research goals uh, that uh, our colleagues have been involved in is an identification of uh, synthetic peptides or express protein antigens to detect patient antibodies uh, in collaboration with local hospitals. In fact, even with the LAMP, we have been uh, having very active collaboration with uh, the ESA hospital as well as the Nizam's Institute of Medical Sciences here in Hyderabad. And another long-term research goal has been to design peptides to block SARS-CoV-2 and host interactions. And also they have been actively participating in this covid gyan website, many of our colleagues have been participating in various capacities. I'll just quickly take you through the uh, things that we have carried out already. Uh, Manish might uh, mention this later if he has the time. Uh, so this is the LAMP essay that is now actively been tested and validated. Uh, so uh, it is a color based identification in 30 minutes. Um, and uh, the test takes 30, uh, about 30 minutes and the results are determined by change of color by from orange to yellow. And uh, the test was validated against both positive and negative patient samples. And we have had collaboration with uh, Dr. Madhu Mohan Rao at uh, Nizam's Institute of Medical Sciences and uh, Srinivas at the ESIC Hospital Medical College, Hyderabad. The researchers involved, as I mentioned over here, are Manish, uh, Srijit, Sunayana, and Deepa. Uh, on the masks, we have had um, uh, development of rechargeable masks based on a graphene oxide paint. And the interesting and important thing is the fact that uh, the uh, tribological recharging of this mask can be easily achieved by uh, even movement of jaw and therefore um, allows um, greater sort of a versatility in terms of its use. And uh, some of our colleagues who are involved are listed over here. Raja Lakshmi and Tien Narayan have led the group. Stelbin, Sudeshna have participated in this. Also, another aspect that we have been involved is uh, to have uh, come up with a simple device for testing uh, the mask materials and also the mask itself in terms of um, uh, uh, the fact whether the mask has been uh, can be recharged again and what is the status of the mask. And this is uh, in, still in progress, but we hope to be able to complete this uh, somewhat quickly. Uh, today, uh, we are um, privileged to have uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan uh, formally inaugurate this diagnostic training program. Uh, already as part of this effort, uh, uh, colleagues in uh, TFR Hyderabad have trained students and postdocs on RT-PCR based methods. 
and we are hoping that to extend this methodology uh, to various people in particularly in government organizations professionals who work in diagnostic facilities and labs and uh, other other people and uh, the first batch of training starts today auspiciously on uh, gandhi's birthday and uh, the long term research goals as i mentioned are two of them which we are pursuing one is this identification of efficient synthetic peptides as well as designing peptides so very quickly going through this uh, so the research goals are identification of the most efficient synthetic peptide or express protein antigens to detect patient antibodies and uh, this involves uh, the implications are that you would have uh, peptides and proteins would be identified for immune assays which will boost uh, epidemiological efforts and treatment strategies using convalescent plasma uh this research is essentially uh, led by kalyaneshwar mandal uh, and the students involved are jamsha dhanamika brunamai and we have collaboration with rahul roy uh the other long term uh, project that kalyanmai has been leading is uh, designing peptides to block sars uh, cov2 and host interactions uh, where the research goal is to design high affinity peptides based on the n terminal helix of the human is to protein and uh, again this is a work that is in progress now before i uh, conclude and uh, request uh, vijay to formally inaugurate i must actually thank uh, professor jitu meyer who has been the uh, uh, or task force leader in terms of uh, um, involving all tfr centers for uh, and putting them uh, together on the same platform and monitoring the progresses in these various research projects uh, so this is basically what we have been doing and now i formally uh, request uh, professor vijay raghavan uh, to say a few words and inaugurate the training program amal could we have something to say uh, no uh, professor vijay raghavan can uh, inaugurate um, thank you very very much it's a great pleasure and an honor to be here today um i'd like to start by saying um before um going on that you know this is a a great collaboration it's a testimony to what um tifr in general and tifr hyderabad and the national center for biological sciences the bangalore life sciences cluster other institutions have done none of this would have been possible without a strong investment in fundamental science which is character speak of tifr and is there in its name and none of this would have been possible without a link to society which was deepened by this terrible pandemic and by a partnership which came to um allow these tools to reach people through the generosity and the coordination of the bill and melinda gates foundation um i'd like to acknowledge uh, kaila laserson over here and uh, akhilesh vadwani and also uh, other philanthropic foundations uh, i'd also uh, particularly like to thank uh, my colleagues uh, here dr sapna poti and others who have been relentless in taking these uh, kinds of collaborations to fruition it's a testimony of how uh, rapidly things have changed from a situation where we used to uh, worry about the link between academia industry and society yet how this pandemic has Uh, allowed the fruits of science and technology to rapidly reach people in general um it was 1918 three years after he returned to india from south africa that mahatma gandhi thought he had a mild case of dysentery when he was in ahmedabad and he had some kheer made by kasurba and then he went on to be severely affected he writes in a story um um and his experiments with truth in his autobiography that this was sufficient invitation to the angel of death what gandhi ji had was a gastric version of the spanish flu and that flu devastated the world a little more than 100 years ago and this scripting story is told um, in many books most recently by laura spinney's the pale rider it's important to read that book and stories of 1918 because it is you know extremely chilling to see how many of the debates and discussions and problems we have today were identical to what we had in 1980 and it's a testimony to how little um 
the influence of rational logical thinking on scientific uh, on society has changed and how easy it is to whip up concerns when we're faced with such terrible unknowns. Now, the state of our world seemed immutable only a year ago uh, in, 19, uh, in 2019. And the global braid of politics, economics, dominance, and relationships were all knotted together in a way that seemed impossible to redo. Yet, in December 2019, uh, all this changed. A spillover occurred. A virus normally resident in bats infected a human in Wuhan, China. And often the story would have ended there. But the human would normally recover and all would be well. This time, the virus had the ability to infect another human from its first human host and then others. And this spread. In the 1918 flu pandemic, spread, the spread was like ripples in a pond. Uh, and uh, it spread from country to country uh, steadily. Here, the spread is more like many of you as kids would have thrown a stone on the pond and seen it hopping from one place to another. The way global travel is today, the spread went simultaneously uh, all over the world in a manner which um, affected havoc on our health and livelihood uh, of the most vulnerable. And there was enormous damage to the world's economy and morale. Uh, lives and families are in disarray, and the stress and effects on mental health are not to be underestimated. It is actually quite extraordinary, um, you know, to look at what India's response has been. India is a diverse country with enormous social and economic diversity and extraordinary challenges. And when we describe the spread of the disease and the response to, to lump India into uh, one average number would not be correct to see the diversity. There have been extraordinary responses at every level, but particularly in this context today, I'd like to commend our scientists in our scientific institutions, whether they are mathematicians, astronomers, biologists, or physicists, who have come together to address problems in a way which was unimaginable over a year ago. So this is absolutely credited. Now, as we go two thirds of the way through this nightmare year, it is more necessary than ever to wake up and get our lives and livelihood back and not be numbed into interaction, waiting for a miracle to lead us out. In truth, that miracle is actually already here and is all, it's, it's in all of us. We have learned much about the virus and we need to learn a lot, lot more. In other words, research on the virus and its impact on the society translated into immediate and medium term and long term benefit is very, very important. Some conclusions of, the of what we've learned about the virus are very persuasive. Following them, we can crush the virus and have our lives back. And it's not easy to follow that, these instructions. We have to mask up properly when in company, observe hygiene, keep distance from others as much as feasible, and stay in ventilated spaces. This is simple to say, but often very hard to do. Try to follow these instructions if you live in a tenement with 10 other people. Try to follow these instructions if you have to commute long distance to your job. And therefore, just as we have got extraordinary scientific solutions, which we've heard about now, such as masks, we need to be inventive and see how we can deal with these problems and their solutions in our complex spaces. That's feasible, it's difficult, but it's possible. The next aspect which will take us out of this in many ways are drugs and therapeutics. Drugs are easier to uh, to, to dispense than vaccines, but drugs against such viral diseases are much more difficult to make, to discover, and to test out and make sure they work. And the reason for that, as all of you know, is that drugs against a virus, which substantially uses our own machinery, are difficult to be specific, and they have to act early before the viral load expands. These are big challenges, yet in dexamethasone we have a really good later treatment and earlier treatments are possible. And there too, particularly in cities such as Hyderabad and Bangalore, the extraordinary research efforts need to be focused on repurposing existing drugs and looking for new drugs in the context of what is therapeutically valuable at high speed. This is possible and valuable. Similarly, vaccines provide a longer term exit. And it's incredible to see the extent of research going on in vaccines in India. Indian manufacturers are well known for their capacity and the ability to save lives all over India 
and all over the world at low cost. But they and many of our startups have started not only stockpiling vaccines, which have been made by them and others, but also have started getting into vaccine development in an extraordinary manner. And this is true innovation. Uh, and you know, we will need many vaccines. Each vaccine will be better than the other, will work in different contexts in different ways. And that's very important. From the, sec from the next aspect of delivery of vaccines, again, science is going to be very, very important. While manufacturers will be good at stockpiling and fill and finishing, the distribution of a vaccine to the entire population or substantially to the entire population in different waves poses an enormous challenge. No country has done this uh, and no country uh, can do this on a scale that India needs to do. Our IT uh, experts, our scientists, our health ministry, everyone is getting together to put in place mechanism by which the cold chain of delivery is in place and the identification of those who get vaccines under different systems uh, of you know, getting them either free or notional or under different kinds of insurance plans, all that is being put in place with great speed and your ideas and your inputs there is going to be very, very important. Um, there is a important, in this general context, I'd like to end by saying that there's an extraordinary expectation and importance uh, for the role of scientists over here. And when good boundary conditions are set, while we do our own work, whether it is in mathematics or astronomy or physics or chemistry, if society sets in place good boundary conditions, incredible solutions come from scientists. Speaking in 1941 on language and science, Albert Einstein says that if the goals of a society are clearly articulated, scientists will find means to reach them. If there's a perfection of means and a confusion of goals, and much of our science has been trapped in this cage, we will not move ahead. The pandemic has shaken us to what our goal should be. We must focus on the environment, biodiversity, and sustainable development. Ill with flu in 1918 in a pandemic, the Mahatma did not flinch and instilled both. Both meaning um, a self-confidence and a a certainty that we must find our solutions. On this day, on his birth anniversary, we must do this again. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Professor Vijayaraghavan. That was indeed uh, nice to hear uh, your comments. So the next next speaker to say is uh, Sandeep Trivedi, but he unfortunately could not take part in this meeting. Um, so I will just read out his message that he sent in the morning. So he says, he, I'm very happy to learn about the training program for COVID. Sorry. I'm very happy to learn about the training program for COVID testing, which has been initiated at TFR Hyderabad. I congratulate all TFR Hyderabad scientists who are involved. I also express my thanks to the PSA and his office for their help and support. The best wishes from Sandeep Pravini. So I now invite Professor Srinivas from ESIC Hospital in Hyderabad to give his remarks. Srinivas, please. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the Ministry of Labor and Employment Government of India, the ESI Corporation, uh, I would like to say thank you to all, especially to Professor Vijay Raghavan, sir, and then Chandrasekhar, sir, that this hospital, uh, the youngest of the ESIC Medical Colleges, uh, last year got the award of the best ESIC Medical College in the country. We are 1,000 beds, our hospital, with 300 beds, which are exclusively reserved for the COVID, with uh, almost 150 to 200 ICU beds for the COVID. And uh, uh, as on today, we have done almost 35,000 testings for the COVID, RT-PCR done. Thousands of the patients have visited and then they have been treated over here. We have the state-of-the-art BSL-2 and BSL-3 lab. In fact, the country's first of its kind uh, mobile virology diagnostic research lab donated by the defense ministry by the DRDO is with us and uh, looking forward for the research and development, especially on the diagnostic and the therapeutic domains of the COVID. Uh, I request uh, the dignitaries over there that uh, help us. We will definitely join the hands. It's a, a crisis time for all of us. And uh, we are here with all the setup we have the the patient load and also the research laboratories. We will definitely join with the, these research organizations and then come forward for the various uh, new modalities for the innovations for the diagnosis and treatment. Thank you very much. 
Thanks, Professor Srinivas. So I now call upon the, uh, the head of fine Sanjay Sarin to say a few words. Sanjay. Uh, thank you, Professor Madhu. Uh, honorable PSA and uh, other dignitaries, uh, uh, testing is the first line of defense against COVID-19, as we all know, and uh, most importantly, uh, it is actionable now. Testing, tracing, and isolating confirmed cases works. So until a vaccine is developed and is produced for global use, diagnostics remains our most effective tool in the fight against COVID-19. The government of India has made significant progress in expanding the uh, laboratory network for COVID-19 diagnosis by operationalizing more than 1,500 labs across the country. As the country continues to ramp up its testing capacity, it is equally important to invest in training and capacity building of those who are involved in, uh, in, in COVID-19 testing so in order to ensure the accuracy and reproducibility of the results and uh, more importantly, ensure uh, the appropriate utilization of the laboratory infrastructure. Uh, so in that sense, uh, you know, this initiative on lab training for COVID-19 diagnostics by the PSA's office is, uh, is very timely and it's a step in the right direction. Uh, we at FIND are privileged uh, to be a part of this exercise and are grateful to the, to the PSA's office for this opportunity and to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, for supporting this initiative. Thank you once again, uh, Dr. Madhu, and, and all the very best to the people for uh, taking the training call. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. So now I call upon Dr. Kaila Lesterson, who is the Deputy Director of the Infectious Diseases Melinda Gates Foundation of the, of the Indian office. Uh, Kaila, please. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Madhu. And uh, Professor Vijay Raghavan and uh, all esteemed colleagues. And on behalf of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, it's really a great pleasure to collaborate with the PSA's office and with the government of India uh, to uh, support this laboratory training for COVID uh, in collaboration with FIND and the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Hyderabad, TIFR, Mumbai, PAN-IT, Alumni, Re Reach for India, or PARFI, and the National Institute of Immunology. The COVID-19 pandemic has certainly underscored the importance of science and of our public health workforce. Uh, in particular, the laboratory technicians and scientists. Uh, the lab diagnostics, laboratory diagnostics for COVID in India and the, the rapid increase in testing is really truly extraordinary. Uh, and especially what we see coming, some of the new diagnostics on the horizon. So we are confident that this training, both online and in person, will serve uh, all of the states and the country well uh, for COVID uh, and also uh, for the future, for all laboratory training that will be needed for any number of known or unknown pathogens in our future. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Dr. Kerr, very much for your remarks. I now call upon uh, Professor Jitu Mayer from NCBS TFR Bangalore for his remarks. Jitu, please. Yeah, um, thanks, Madhu. Um, also, um, you know, uh, I, I'd also uh, like to extend <clears throat> my Thanks to uh, Vijay, the and the principal scientific advisor to the Prime Minister's office, uh, for uh, making this diagnostic training program activity possible. Uh, I I'd like to give a couple of uh, <clears throat> a um, sort of this uh, uh, having been part of the. Uh, uh, the TIFR's task force on the response to COVID, uh, especially uh, towards testing, diagnostics, and uh, uh, amelioration. Uh, you know, when uh, when the um, you know the clarion call came that we were going to require RT-PCR <clears throat> reverse transcriptase PCR testing for this virus, uh, it was clear to almost anyone who knows anything about uh, RT-PCR that this was not going to be a simple test to administer. Uh, it was clear to us that uh, this was gonna be a demanding task and not very many laboratories uh, in diagnostic centers as well as uh, anywhere else were equipped to handle the uh, 
the, the demands that the, of, the, of both the use of RT-PCR, uh, its interpretation, uh, as well as uh, the um, rigor that was necessary for the testing program. Now, and as Vijay mentioned, when this, when we as scientists, you know, who sometimes think about what are the possibilities of given a given circumstance, I mean, we do that in our own research all the time, uh, but, but when we realized that this was something that was going to be necessary, uh, you know, and the, uh, and uh, the, uh, 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 I must say here, uh, Dr. The, Dr. Sapna Poti, uh, she um, brought uh, forward the possibility that maybe uh, if we saw a need, training could be a major effort uh, in this direction. And she brought together the Pan-India IIT alumni group. She brought together uh, the National Institute of Immunology, TIFR, uh, the Kolaba campus, uh, and other group in Hyderabad and suggested that we, um, you know, while we uh, may engage in many activities in the different locations of, of TIFR or in different, uh, different centers of the central government uh, research infrastructure, this training activity was going to be extremely important. And uh, I must say uh, TIFR Hyderabad and uh, the institutions I just mentioned uh, <clears throat> jumped to this task because you know, it, it was, uh, of course, it going to be difficult to set up uh, testing itself uh, on the premises, given that many of our students and uh, many of our workforce, if you will, had, um, had been sent home the uh, uh, moment the uh, lockdowns were announced, or at least moments after the lockdown was announced. Um, so, uh, so this testing program grew from that realization that we would require a trained group of people. And I must say, uh, the only remedy right now we have uh, for the virus, as Vijay also mentioned, uh, is three letter, uh, three words, test, test, and test. Uh, and that requires diagnostics at a level that is going to be uh, even ever increasing in the days to come. Uh, today, there are, you know, in, I can speak for Karnataka, over 140 uh, laboratories engaged in this testing. And everywhere we notice that people are undertrained. So I think it's, it's this, this um, program, uh, which has been sort of presently funded so generously by the Bill and, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, uh, is, is an extremely important one. And um, you know, I, I really thank uh, them for the support and find uh, for for the engagement uh, in in this um, in this activity to ensure that this that perhaps the only uh, the only bulwark we have against the virus, which is testing and then tracking and of course uh, uh, tracing, um, uh, is is going to be is going to be met. Now this uh, no, the the, the uh, at the NCBS I should say that uh, which, which again is a center of the TIFR, uh, we have been doing the other end, which is, the, which is testing. And, um, and clearly uh, from, our, from our knowledge of, of just operating a testing laboratory in a scientific research environment, uh, you know, has first of all its own challenges because we are not used to uh, the, the, uh, the sort of the specifications of a diagnostic laboratory. And, and even, I mean, it's not that one cannot learn that, but I think it is important that one begins to distinguish between diagnostics and research uh, and, and create, you know, in a, in a way, opportunities for young people to, you know, move back and forth between these two uh, areas of, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the mechanisms that are going to be necessary in the coming months and perhaps years uh, to combat uh, this this uh, you know pandemic uh, on our hands, uh, and the and on the you know on the occasion of the uh, of Mahatma Gandhi's birthday, I could only but notice uh, that uh, behind uh, uh, the PSA, uh, uh, if he shows if he's there and if he shows himself, there is a picture of the Mahatma peering into a microscope, uh, and. Uh, literally, that is the need of the hour. 
uh, he is showing us the way that we really need to look and bring research to the fore uh, and you know of course create the, the testing opportunity the training opportunity but also bring the research uh, that we uh, have uh, you know built and the research infrastructure that we have built uh, in in not only the TIFR system but across the country to bear on this problem and so uh, you know on the occasion of the uh, um, you know birth anniversary of the Mah of Mahatma Gandhi I think we should redouble our our commitment to um, to to research and I congratulate this team to have put together this program on on training so thank you very much uh, Madhu and uh, thank you all for uh, really taking this forward. And um, I, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't say that none of this would have happened without uh, Sapna's, uh, you know, untiring effort, group of uh, newly scientists together, but also bring in uh, adequate funding for, uh, for this program. So thank you very much. Can't hear you, Madhu. Madhu, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jitu, for the for the talk. And we could also see that uh, the picture which Jitu was mentioning in Vijay Raghavan's uh, profile. Um, I, I must also mention now that we also have the first set of trainees who have come over here. So there are about eight eight of them who have come over here. Thanks to again the efforts put in by Srinivas, Madhuri, and um, Madhu Mohan and other people. So we already have enough people lined up for the next uh, two, three rounds, actually, almost 25 to 30 trainees. So now I request my colleagues, Adish Tani and Manish Jaiswal, to take over and tell, tell you a little bit about how we are going to plan this pro program and some of the details associated with it. Uh, I guess Manish is going to start. Now. Manish, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our inauguration program. I would give uh, some brief uh, description of what we are planning in a couple of uh, you know, sessions of training here. Uh, uh, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Gates Foundation, ESA, as well as Science India to make this event possible. Um, and uh, our team, uh, together with NII, uh, PARFI, and uh, TFM Mumbai, we have come up with uh, some uh, uh, schedule for, for our uh, theory classes for five days and then two weeks of hands-on training. And I'll give you overview of uh, some of those activities. So in, uh, we will cover, uh, so, so we expect that uh, uh, the trainees which will come here, uh, they are of different backgrounds. Some of them are, uh, they have a background of diploma in medical lab technology. They might not be uh, aware of uh, state-of-art molecular biology. Uh, techniques. So we will give uh, one five week, uh, five days of uh, extensive theory classes, and then followed by hands-on training. So in th theory classes, we are uh, covering uh, overview of molecular diagnostics and its immediate relevance to infectious diseases. Um, so that uh, training uh, training is not only limited to uh, COVID-19 diagnosis, but it can actually go beyond that. Uh, we'll we'll detail about we'll detail about uh, DNA RNA isolation principles analysis by elect gel electrophoresis which are conventional techniques and followed by uh, principles of uh, PCR QRT PCR its, its various application including uh, COVID-19 diagnostics and then uh, we'll focus on uh, QRT PCR data analysis specific to COVID-19. Uh, later part we will also discuss uh, various alternatives to QRT PCR. Uh, there are there are techniques uh, which are uh, which are based on isothermal amplification of nucleic acid RNA and DNA. One of the popular technique is LAMP, and as uh, our uh, center director Vichendra uh, Shekhar has stated, that we have been trying to look at uh, trying to work with the LAMP technique here. So we would like to uh, describe as well as demonstrate how LAMP technique works, and we think that in near future, uh, LAMP-based techniques and LAMP-based kits will be in the market soon. There was also a CRISPR-based technology developed by MIT from Fengxiang and also from IGIB CSIR in Delhi. I think they named it Faluda. Uh, it is being commercial. It is under process of commercialization. So we would be happy to discuss about those things as well, so that uh, people are aware of the, the new technology which are coming from in the diagnostic field. Uh, we'll also discuss about antibody and antigen-based uh, detection assays, uh, which are may not be as sensitive as QRT-PCR, but they are very fast and can be implicated in a, in a variety of setups. 
Uh, finally, uh, it's very important to talk about biosafety. So we will give an extensive um, uh, idea about uh, how to take care of uh, yourself when you are working in uh, COVID or any infectious disease labs. Um, so, uh, so this pro this whole uh, the theory program will be done online with the help of instructors from uh, TFR Mumbai, TFR Hyderabad, NII, and and Parsi. And in addition, uh, all the participants will also be able to take uh, online course, which is developed by Point. Uh, in, in this slide, uh, we uh, I'm describing what we are planning to do in, uh, in terms of hands-on training. Uh, so first of all, we'll start with introduction to lab instrumentation, good lab practices, waste handling, disposal, PPE, et cetera. Um, then how to handle all the samples which arrive uh, to your uh, uh, laboratory and how to take care of uh, you know, uh, the rest of the workflow. Um, over the time, uh, you know, previous training sessions which we have conducted here, we realized that uh, pipetting is something very important. So we have dedicated a couple of sessions on pipetting and calibration, uh, and followed by proper RNA isolation techniques and QRT PCR. We uh, every uh, uh, trainee will have enough time to uh, get their hands dirty with uh, RNA isolation technique and QRT PCR. They can put. Uh, they can learn how to handle RT-PCR machine and finally how to analyze the data or how to interpret and, and other troubleshooting. Um, finally, we will also demonstrate and also uh, ask trainee to uh, work with colorimetric lamp assay, which we have been working on. Um, and uh, the whole training will be uh, followed by some kind of assessment where we will have a theoretical as well as practical assessment by quizzes and so on uh, uh, experiments discussions and uh, you know we, we can uh, we will have enough time for interaction as as well as trouble you know uh, solving some uh, problems and uh, of course we'll get feedback from each batch so that we can improve upon our, uh, upon our training schedule uh, finally ECIC hospital has agreed that uh, uh, trainees uh, if, uh, we would like them to go and work in the ECIC hospital uh, laboratories where they can, if if they prefer, they can uh, work in ac with actual human samples for for a couple of days. Um, finally, uh, this is a space which is developed. We have recently developed this space uh, here in a, in a temporary setup. So we realized that we don't have any uh, dedicated space for trainees. Uh, so temporarily, the for administration and IT section as well technical service, uh, they have put this uh, temporary space together, which is ready for the training. Uh, and we'll start our training from uh, from Monday. Finally, I would like to uh, acknowledge uh, our team. Uh, very special thanks to our colleagues, scientific staff, and student volunteer for putting uh, together uh, the teaching module. And Anand Vatya has been involved, especially in uh, establishing the te teaching module. Scientific officers Deepa, Gopal Krishna, and Shijit have been involved in uh, setting up the sample and planning the entire uh, training setup. And uh, thanks to ECIC Hospital for collaboration and, of course, uh, TFR admi administration for, for uh, vivid support, various supports. Thank you. Thanks, Mahesh. Um, so, we are actually out of time. So, if any one of you wants to make a remark or so, I can wait for. Uh, a minute or something like that before we formally close with some yeah, concluding yeah. remarks. Actually, so I just give one minute if, if anyone wants to sort of say so, something. So, uh, Madhu, uh, can we request uh, the PSA to formally inaugurate? I mean, he gave the. So we also uh, have the trainees here. I mean, if they want to say something, also they are welcome to do that. So, uh, if, 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 Vijay, if you're there. And they're preparing. So, thanks everyone for attending this uh, program. Uh, right from yeah. Madhu, uh, Madhu, 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 and I also thank the TFR Hyderabad faculty, all the scientific officers, and in particular the students, some of whom were actually associated with the similar training program even during the early stages of the lockdown period, which actually helped us to put together and compile 
a rather good looking version of an online module and the, the lab sessions. So thanks to many of them who actually came over here during the lockdown period in batches and also to the faculty who took the efforts to train them, which sort of culminated in this, in this particular uh, training schedule. And I once again thank all of you for having taken part in this program. And we hope we will be able to train pretty well. I mean, a large number of batches, as I said earlier, there are quite a few who have already signed up. And we also look forward to people from the remote villages. And we are in negotiation with some of them uh, at this point of time. So thanks very much, uh, everyone. So, and uh, I, Mathu, can you hear us? Mathu, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we see, please. Yeah, I, I, I think of, uh, if Vijay is around, can you formally request him to say that it's a formally inaugurated because he has given an address, but if he is around, if he says that, then we would have formally inaugurated. Otherwise, we'll take his address as uh, conveying that sense. We, uh, VC, uh, yes, and and uh, Madhu, I, can I just add a couple of lines uh, to close? I mean, yes. no, no, just from my side, uh, I just wanted to say that you know, coupled with the training program, there is a. I mean, you know, we may be seeing right now perhaps only the tip of the iceberg of what is necessary for the testing activity. And uh, so the diagnostic capacity in the country also has to go up. And here again, there has been a, uh, a huge effort on the side of the, uh, you know, again, brought in by the PSA, but also uh, taken up by uh, a number of, uh, a number of institutions collaborating with industry to enhance the capacity of testing at least by a factor of two or, or maybe even 10 in the next three months. So the, the need of the program that you have, I mean, that you have uh, put on the ground is going to grow exponentially. And um, I can only think that, I, I, that this is a, a, good, a good beginning and you know, it's gonna have to um, you know, be expanded in scope uh, as quickly as you can imagine. So, um, you know, but I, I mean, I must say congratulations on this fantastic uh, beginning. Thanks, Jita. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, then uh, thanks, and I hope we will get, uh, actually, we already have the trainees, so we'll get started, and uh, we'll let you know how it's going. Thank you. Right. So we, we will have a high tea here. I'm sorry that we can't do it for all of you, <laughs> but some of us will have it for sure. <laughs> thanks. Thanks again very much, and uh, we will we, we'll okay. update all of you about our yeah. progress. Thanks. Thank you.